I have another knife I want to share with you today. Today we have the Bushcraft Plus from the Chinese company Real Steel. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this knife, keep watching. Before we get started, I want to thank the company Real Steel for sending me the Bushcraft Plus so that I could share it with you. So I've had this knife for some time. I've been using it and putting this through its paces as you would expect from me. I'm ready now to give you my thoughts on it. So what we'll do is bring the camera in a little closer so that you can get some good look at the knife. I'll go over its specifications at the same time as well as its design, of course. Then we'll do some demonstrations of it in use and then I'll wrap up by giving you my thoughts on it. All right, let's get started. But before we do, I just have to say this. Uh, the deer flies are out. And if you've watched my videos, you know just how much I hate deer flies and how they seem to be attracted to me. I'm actually having a very good day as far as mosquitoes and black flies go. Not so much with the deer flies. And I forgot my dragonfly wingman. So I'm going to have to put up with this. Hopefully you don't see me slap or swear or anything when I get bitten by them. All right, let's get started on the knife. So just before I go into the knife details itself, it's worth showing you the sheath so we can get that out of the way. So here is the sheath that the knife came with. And I have some very definite opinions on it. Let me just put the knife into the sheath first. It is a nylon chief with a Kydex liner, and it does snap in fairly well. It has a secondary retention of a Velcro nylon strap that goes around the handle. Uh, okay, let me just take the knife out. We'll go over the sheaf. We'll put it aside. I think you're probably getting the impression that I'm not too impressed with the sheaf. And I'm not, quite honestly, I'm not too impressed with the sheaf. It's not that the quality is not good. Uh, it's fine. It's very much like a lot of uh, nylon sheaves are. It's not cheap or chintzy. It's just not appropriate in my mind. Now, you may differ in your opinion on this, but if this is truly a bushcraft knife, I don't think it belongs in this sheath. This is the sheath for a survival knife or even a military knife or some type of knife, but not necessarily bushcraft. Why do I say that? Well, here's a couple of things. Uh, this is probably personal preference as much as anything, but this just does not look the part. <laughs> That's just that simple. It just does not look the part. Is it functional? Oh yeah, it's functional. It'll do the job of holding the knife and taking it where you want to go. And it has options that you may not get on other types of sheaths. It's just nothing I like. So uh, I'll go over the sheath because obviously you did hear my opinion on it, but let me just show you the features it has anyway. I already mentioned the Kydex insert. You can actually take that out and I'm going to do that in a second, but let's just go down the front of the sheath. So there is a fast X or side release buckle on the side. And I've got a few items inside of the little pocket right here uh, that I'll talk about in a few minutes time. On the back of the sheath, there is, I don't know, initial belt loops that you could fasten it to, maybe molly webbing. I'm not quite sure. There, it's, there's multiple types. It's all Velcro. See what I'm saying? You, there's a, you can hook it onto things in different ways. I guess it's nice to have options if you want to do that. One thing that probably is a good feature on this sheath is the belt loop itself. It's plenty wide. It'll definitely support the weight. And it's one of those sheaths that you can actually take it on and off your belt without having to undo your belt. So that has some benefits as well. It also has not a D-ring, but a I don't know, a plastic attachment up here. If you want to even drop it further, I suppose if you had a leg extension or some type of an extension from your belt, you could drop this down your thigh and tie it to your leg. In fact, they actually give you some paracord, not enough for doing that with, but you could actually add a piece of paracord longer to do that with. So what the, what is this piece of paracord all about? Well, in fact, that's holding the, the uh, Kydex liner in the sheath. So let me just undo this. I have a little knot through it because I found the, the rope itself kind of irritating. All right, you can see it just kind of pulls through, put that aside, and then you can pull the Kydex liner out. Um, this may be the one redeeming feature of the sheath is this Kydex liner. It is quite well made, it does do its job, but all right, let's just put the knife up so I can put it back in. Here's the first thing. Okay, maybe I'll show it to you this way. You, the retention goes to about here. Look how much longer the Kydex, Kydex is than the knife itself. Unnecessarily so. So let me just put it in. All right, so in fact, there's a tiny drain hole drilled on the back. I don't think it's very functional, but it's there. So it's in a, at least an attempt to add a drain hole to it. But there's all this Kydex 
from about here down that isn't really doing anything except to allow it to be put in that sheath. So the sheath is just way too big for what it needs to be. However, if you don't like the sheath, you do like the Kydex and you'd like to play around with it, I don't see any reason why you couldn't add a nylon belt or belt loop or even leather if you wanted to on the back of this Kydex as long as you have some type of secondary retention like a dome snap that would go in around here. There is good retention it's just there's not a lot of it if you see what I mean like it's it the the, sh the handle comes so far out of the sheath that I'd be a little worried that if I got dumped upside down that this would drop out because it's not real tight retention at all actually all right sheath out of the way I probably spent more time on that sheath than I should have but uh, I just wanted to share my opinions on it so what I've done is I just happen to have a leather sheath at home that was perfectly suited to this knife and that's the way I've been carrying it and that's the way I'll continue to carry it after this video okay let's go over the specifications for this knife blade length 4.56 inches or 116 millimeters Total length from tip to pommel, 9.44 inches or 240 millimeters. Blade thickness, 0.17 of an inch or 4.5 millimeters. Blade steel, really nice choice here, 14C28N. That's really becoming popular. It's just above entry level. It's a good quality steel. It's proven itself, especially with the Mora knives and now with a lot of other knives. Yeah, a nice stainless steel, easy to sharpen, takes a very fine edge, holds it reasonably well, and still allows you to resharpen it without a whole lot of calisthenics doing it. Handles are G10 material. All right, let's just go over the design a little bit because there are some um, really cool things on this, and then there's some things that I just, I just don't think really belong here. Drop point blade design, really quite attractive. It's just a nice smooth drop point. It's not center point on the handle, just above a little bit, but not too bad at all. It has a full convex grind from top to bottom, although as I look at it, you may be able to see the tiny bit of reflection off of the edge. And that has because it has a bit of a micro convex on it or a micro secondary edge on it. Um, I'm not sure if that was there or if I did that, to be quite honest. I, I don't think I noticed it when I first started, but through running this down a ceramic rod and across a strop, I may have created that little polish right on the edge. Either way, it doesn't affect the performance of the knife one little bit and probably even strengthens the tip. However, that's the whole point of a convex is the strength that it provides. A lot of slicing capability with a very strong edge. That's what a convex is all about. However, if you don't like convexes because maybe you're a little intimidated by the sharpening process, the Bushcraft Plus does come in a proper Scandi and in a full flat. All three are good choices in my opinion. This is what I was sent and actually I'm quite happy because I do like playing with convex edges every now and then. All right, let's work away. Oh yeah, there's a little bit of jumping up here. It is not overly aggressive It and neither is it uh, how should I say? Get in the way. It doesn't hurt at all. Some people love using their thumb there. Uh, me, not so much. I can see using it a little bit when I'm carving. More than likely, though, I'm actually moving my thumb further up the spine. Let's speak of the spine. Yes, it is sharp. If you're wondering, I could probably scrape off fingernail here, but I'll demonstrate scraping with that in a few moments' time. As you can see, I've been doing some scraping with it. It is a full broad tang. It is hidden. The pommel is hidden. Here's the lanyard attachment. This is kind of cool. This seems to be a trend that's going with knives now where it's a hidden lanyard attachment and all I have on it is this tiny piece of orange paracord. Again, in case I drop it. Those are the things I really like about it. There is one more. We'll talk about the handle grip design in a moment. Here's what I'm not so hot on and that is the fact that you can remove the scales. Now that's not a bad thing in and of itself. If you want to remove the scales, maybe for cleaning because you're a little worried that some water got in behind them, that's great. If you want to do what I might do with this and add a little bit of a liner material to widen them out a little bit, that's great. But the concept of these removable scales, and they did send an Allen key with the knife for you to do this, is so that you can get access to a cutout in the center portion of the handle and put something in there. I don't know, fish hooks, fishing line, whatever you want to put in there. And then in a survival situation, you have access to it. Here's my recommendation. Don't. <laughs> don't even remember that that's there. Just forget all about it. Forget the fact that you can remove these scales. Why do I say that? Okay, number one, at home, 
in my hose, I took the scales off and promptly lost one of the, the uh, attachment bolts here. Had to ask Real Steel to send me a replacement. A little bit embarrassing, but that's how easy it was to lose in my house. And I can only imagine what would happen if I did it out here in the woods. Tried to remove those to get access to something. And how much can you realistically store inside of this handle? Not enough to make it worthwhile. Not enough that you're actually going to carry the... Well, let's put it this way. you got to carry the Allen key with you. Why not, whatever you had the Allen key in, carry the things that you would have had inside of here? I don't know. Just logic, I guess. It's a feature. It's a survival knife type of feature. I just don't think it belongs on a bushcraft knife and I even... On a survival knife, it's questionable about its value. Okay, last thing we're going to talk about in terms of design is the handle itself. We have become very used to seeing the classic, what's referred to as the Coke bottle shape design for bushcraft knives, where it has a bit of a, I don't want to call it a choil so much, and then a palm swell and another matching choil at the rear. Sometimes the forward choil is a little bit thinner. Contouring is usually so that it flares out in the middle again for a palm swell and back in again. Um, and it's meant to be ergonomic in your hand. And most hands will fit most of those scales. But it's not the only design out there. We know that. There's a lot of knives that have very traditional designs by means of just what they call broom handle. So it's straight all the way out, maybe flat sided, rounded on top, almost all the way around. There's lots of variations on it. This is not one you see a lot of and it's not often thought of as a bushcraft style handle on a knife but does it remind you of anything how about the mora bushcraft black that's the one that it first struck me as now the, the mora has a little bit more of a pronounced choil here and well okay so but can you see the resemblance and i actually like the bushcraft black a lot in fact it's one of my favorite of the mora lineup but uh, yeah okay so it's not a problem it works very well. Now, as you'll see, we'll just finish this off. I might as well address the handle and my thoughts on it now. Um, it's nice G10. It's not especially wide through here, but you've heard me complain about that before because of my XL hands. Uh, it doesn't really have to be really wide through here as long as it's deep enough through here. And this one is not. Not for me, at least. It may serve you just fine, but the ratio is such that the width to height it could be better. It could be just a little tiny deeper down to where my thumb is down here. What that allows is better purchase on your hand. And if you're rolling, rotating the knife in your hand and carving, and that's, of course, what one of the things you do with a bushcraft knife, it's less likely to want to twist in your hand. You have more purchase on it that way. Small thing. Uh, can I live with the design as it is? Yeah, of course I can. I'm, if I put anything liners in, I'm going to make it wider, and that's it. Going to exaggerate that issue with the with the ratio top to bottom. So I may or may not do that. It's fine the way it is. Please don't take this as a real negative. I just wanted to point that out in case it's something that you like to see in terms of ratio. Last thing I'm going to say about the design is, um, you know, the rounding of the G10 up here. It's sufficient. There's quite a bit of flat up here, but the rounding, it is sufficient. It doesn't provide any hot spots. You're not aware of it when you're using it in your hand for extended period of times. I wish I could say for the bottom, the same for the bottom. Can you see the edges? They're virtually, they're almost 90 degree edges along here and here. Just a little bit too much so, so that when you grab onto the knife and, you know, this is a test. If you have a knife and you want to know if it's going to cause you a problem, Grab onto it the way you normally would use it. Squeeze hard. And if you can feel a contact point somewhere inside your palm, good chance that over a period of time of using the knife, that's going to become a hot spot for you. You really should not feel any contact points, you know, any, any sharp edges or anything else. Now, you don't hold your knife that hard when you're using it, of course. But over time, that kind of a contact point will actually wear into my hand where you can see up there, this area, I guess, where I'm starting to feel it you know, from, from using it even a short period of time. Again, not a deal breaker, especially since after this video, I'm just going to take a little sandpaper and round it off and then I'll be done. I just wanted to show you as it is in its regular state. Um, yeah, it is actually is a very attractive design. It fits well in my hand. The handle is plenty long, which is unusual for a lot of knives th that I try out. I do like that it is radius up here so that I can lay my thumb there on both sides. And I don't think that was done intentionally for that reason, but it certainly serves the purpose. It's not a scallop, it's just a radiusing that makes it comfortable to put my thumb there. It's comfortable to hold in reverse grip. 
forward grip upside down, although there's not a lot of bushcraft tasks that, boy, that really pronounces that when you do that way, that you would use that grip for, but it's nice to be able to do it. Last thing, all right, only because I know some people find this important, nice sharpening choil. For me, I'm not so uh, married to the idea of a sharpening choil that I have to have one, but uh, it, a lot of people do, and it's there, and it's a well-designed one. I think that's enough said about the design. Let's put it through a few tests. All right, if you've been watching my channel anytime and any of my knife reviews, you know, I, I just have a few standard tests I'd like to use. It's the easiest way to draw comparisons from one knife to another. And it also, the tests that I choose are the ones that probably, at least for me, I do most often with a knife and with regards to bushcraft tasks. And I think each of these tests represents at least one of the skills most of the other tasks you're likely to do with a bushcraft knife. So fire prep. Fire prep starts with taking a piece of wood and making it smaller. <laughs> That's what basically is processing wood as it referred to. So I picked up this piece of dead maple and I'm a little sus suspect. It uh, seems to be plenty heard on that end, not so much on that end. We're going to use it because it's the only piece I had hand here without go searching for another tree to take down. So this is what we're going to do. First test, of course, is batoning. And the blade is plenty long for this. Actually, this might be a little bit better wood than I thought it was. Well, until it got to the bottom. Well, at least this much of it is reasonable. Hopefully it's reasonable enough to do some feather sticking with. I may or may not be able to do so. If it doesn't work out for feather sticking, then I'm going to find something else to demonstrate it with. But batoning, it's not too bad. Now, I have to finish this off and split it down into quarters at the very least. But you can see it started to get punky down at this end. Up here, it's not so bad though. So hopefully there's enough wood that I can work with. But again, if it's not, I'll find something else to work with. All right, so this is the wood that I just split out. It's split out easy enough, but you know, the quality only in the very center is there any actual good wood left to work with. So I've elected not to use this. Um, I think it demonstrates about choice of wood when you go to split it out and you can saw what happens if it's not in really good shape. However, I did find these in my pile of sticks that are laying here, all pre-split out. So I think I can probably find a couple here kind of dirty, that I can do the rest of the demonstrations on, starting with tent pegging. So tent pegging involves two basic skills, the first being a notch to hold your guy line in, the second being a point. And I like doing this because it shows cross batoning. Now a convex has got a very, very strong edge. That's the very nature of it. And uh, this is not a challenge for this type of knife. But on a lot of knives, cross batoning can be a bit of a challenge because it can be a little hard on the edge. So all I'm doing is ah, tap it in about a third of the way into the piece of wood, taking that out and just kind of working down to that stop cut. This is not what you call a really hard skill or all that hard on this knife at least. It can be on some very fragile edges but you know there's two things here cross cutting like this and then twisting your knife to clean out. If the heat treat is not good, if the edge is not well designed, being too thin, then that's where you can expect to get rolls or even chips, especially in cross batoning. But this knife doesn't show like it did anything other than the cut itself. So there we go. Simple notch, right? Now I'll just set back up and I'll put a point on the other end. All right, let's quickly put an edge on this tent peg so that I can move on. This is actually going to be a fairly good test. Hopefully that shows up. Can you see there's a knot in here, right in here? Well, I'm just going to see how easy it is to pull through the knife through that knot using the reverse grip. So chest lever, reverse grip, and the knots resist it, but the knife did its work. And a little bit off to the side. And, all right, that's enough of a point for a tent peg, I'd say. All right, let's go on to feather sticking. All right, feather sticks. You know, they seem to be a fan favorite. Everybody wants to see how well a knife will create a feather stick. And the truth is, 
Some knives, yes, they'll do it more easily than others, but it's more a matter of practice than anything else. And that's, that's just definitely the truth. However, what I can do by doing a demonstration as feather sticks is tell you what I think of this design in creating feathers, maybe compared with other knives. So I've just chosen a piece here. I'm not going to create a full on feather stick, but uh, yeah, I think this will probably work just fine. Dirty. That's probably not a good idea, so I'm going to try and stay away from the dirt because you never know what mineral soil is in the dirt that could put a, a scratch, or not a scratch so much as a chip on the edge of my knife. So that's the, my only concern in doing this. But as we say, let's just put a few feathers on and see what happens here. So then, it, wow, that bites in at least as well. They're trying to create my angle. I would say just like a Scandi grind, you have to be very cautious about your angle in terms of if you go allow it to it'll bite in so deep on the wood that you end up taking more wood off than you intended to so then you back off of the angle and try again this is maple and it's hard Again, I'm just going to create a number of curls, not a full-on feather stick, just to show you how well I get my impressions of it. I'm trying to create the very fine ones now that will work out towards the tip for this. When you work out towards the tip, you can make use of the curve that goes up towards the tip. However, if the knife is very long, then it gets a little awkward. If you have a shorter blade with a more rounded edge on it, you can make more use of that curve. But what I'm trying to do is to get the really tiny ones that will take a spark from a ferrocerium rod more easily. Ones that have multiple, multiple curl. Ah, oh, that's very good. There we go. Found my angle. Little tiny trumpet curls. All right, that's enough not to spend a whole lot of time. So will it create a feather stick? Sure, well, like most other good bushcraft knives, just gonna take a little bit more practice. And again, don't take this as an example of a feather stick. It's just a few feathers on a stick is probably the best way to, there, and off they come. All right, last thing to demonstrate is scraping. All right, so this is a bit embarrassing. Uh, I didn't bring my fat wood but I can still scrape a nice piece of hardwood and create enough of the fine dust that I can light it with a ferrocerium rod. And the reason, and I know this is gonna be sound like an excuse, the reason why I forgot to bring my fat wood is, is because honestly, this is the first time I've been out like this in the woods in one month. Because uh, many of you will know that we had some major forest fires and one of them not too far from where I'm at right now. And the province went under a full fire ban. Well, the fire ban has been lifted, the full fire ban, now it's a regional fire ban, depends on the weather and the time of day and that type of thing, so we're back to that. But I can at least do this demonstration with this knife on a piece of wood, and let's give it a try at the very least. I think people often forget that fat wood, as good as it is, is not the only material that you can scrape and light a fire with. Cut that off. Maybe need to add a little bit more. Okay, that's probably enough for the demonstration. If I was looking to increase my chances of success with this, I would create a whole lot more, but that should be enough for a ferrocerium rod to light. Get them directed properly. I think it is lit. No. There, that's a little bit better. Took a little bit, but maybe I'm out of practice. But you can see, you can light those wood, uh, little bits of wood with your ferrocerium rod and the knife. All right, I think I've done enough. Let's wrap this video up. All right, the Bushcraft Plus from the company Real Steel. Do you know an often overused phrase is great knife for the money. Uh, I don't like using that because this is just a great knife and it just happens to be at a reasonable value. So 
I think you, this is what you would call a high value knife. You're getting a lot for your money. It's not the cheapest knife on the market, but they get a lot more expensive than this. It's a good knife. And uh, yeah, I think there's not much to dislike about this knife. The blade is probably its strongest point in terms of design and quality. Uh, the steel is great, the edge is great, the heat treat is spot on. Yeah, everything I like about the blade. The handle, uh, you know, I really do like the shape of it. It's not only good looking, but it is highly functional with the exception of that ratio I mentioned. I would like it a little bit bigger. And again, that's a personal thing with me, so that may not be something that uh, will bother you in the least. If there's one downside to this knife, it's that sheath, honestly. Um, you may like it, and there's no reason to replace it. It's fully functional. It's just I found something else, and I imagine a lot of people will too. Okay, so I think I've given you all my thoughts on the Real Steel Bushcraft Plus knife. Um, what I'll be doing is putting all the specs and the links in the video descriptions for you to take a closer look at it. But if you have any comments, any questions about the knife, please put those in the comments section. Until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.